Hi everybody, this is Nate Millen, the head football coach at Muhlenberg College. This is my third season as a head football coach, sixth overall here at Muhlenberg College. Besides being the head coach, I'm also the offensive line coach and the offensive coordinator. What I want to talk to you guys today about is our gap run scheme and, and a handful of our things in the gap run game. It was uh, by far uh, our number one uh, used scheme uh, in 2019, the last time we had a season. And I know moving forward, it will be our biggest one uh, in 2021 when we play again. Some of our awards from the last couple of years, we had a great season, making our first ever Final Four, 13-1. We were the last undefeated team in the country and lost to the eventual national champion. Uh, 13th in the red zone, 9th in the country uh, in third down conversions. Uh, and it was our second consecutive Centennial Conference championship. We've been a great program for a number of years, and we have some fantastic student athletes that lead us along the way. Some of our gap run philosophy that we talk about. First of all, this is what we like to, as the old saying goes, this is what we hang our hat on. Our players are going to believe in the gap run scheme. That is really critical for us. They know when we install this on third and one, on third and two, when we get to the goal line, these are the plays that we are going to call. And we feel as though we're going to be able to out-execute our opponents. We run the counter play every week. We run a couple of our other gap schemes that you're going to see, the duo play and the one-back power. And we know that we have more reps in the bank than they do in that week of practice. And that is critically important for us and more importantly for our players to believe in. We think this enables us to utilize our leverage. Uh, we won't talk about it today, uh, but we're always available. Uh, if you want to reach out to us, our contact information was on that front slide where many of these plays are also check plays for us. And we want to put our players in the best possible position to succeed. One of the things I talk about, and maybe I'll offend some people with this statement, um, but I think that our offensive linemen, although the smartest and the strongest, they are the least athletic guys on the field. And so we want to create positive matchups for them. If we have them chasing safeties and corners and running routes, that's just not a good matchup. If we can get them matched up on ends and noses and three techniques, that's where we want them all day. And that's what the gap scheme uh, allows us to do. We also love this against the Blitz. Uh, everybody is going to see different blitzes throughout the year. And we know the key to this is getting movement on these guys. And so when those backers walk up uh, and, and try to get off blocks, we know we have leverage on them and we can move them out of the way on the counter with the diesel or the duo or the gut play um, as well. Our techniques we'll get into, and, and one of, again, the great things about having a series of plays that you can hang your hat on is many of the techniques carry over. So when we talk about our double teams, our vertical double teams on these plays, you're going to run it on all four of the plays that you're going to see here. And that is critical because now when you have limited practice time and maybe high school coaches, you may do offense and defense on different days of the week. This allows you to run a power double team um, drill in practice. And that carries over for four different run concepts. And I can't stress that enough that we get 10 minutes of individual and I can do gap run drills on Monday or Tuesday and that's great for us throughout the entire week. So we're going to talk about our double team here uh, real briefly. We can talk more in depth about some of our um, technique uh, later on. The most important one here, again, is hip to hip. If we're going to move people, they need to be together in the same direction. Many of the times when there is a problem, you have one guy pushing one way and one guy pushing the other way. That's what we call Tacoma Narrows Bridge. If you don't know what the Tacoma Narrows Bridge is, 
do yourself a favor, hit pause, and look it up. It's one of the great engineering disasters of all time. Uh, and, and that's how I feel when we have a poor double team. It's just a great engineering disaster for our offensive linemen and something we need to, 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 to avoid. Hips together, strike together. That is of the utmost importance as well. We can force, if I'm delayed in my striking, then obviously the, the defender is only getting hit once and then twice. We want to settle and strike simultaneously in order to get the most movement out of them. If I have two guys that are 250 pounds, and even if they have a great defensive player who's 300 pounds, right? My guys 250 and 250 is 500. I'm not great at math, but I know we can do that. 500 is greater than 300. And so we should be able to drive that gentleman forward so long as we can strike and move at the same time on that same plane and we're not moving against each other. We want to keep our feet moving. Every offensive lineman knows that, but it's important to drill those things over and over again. And you'll see us in our drill video in just a second. We have our offensive linemen start with their feet moving in all of those drills in order to get that sensation of moving their feet. And it's not plodding and stomping. The, the, the term we use with our guys is the bottom of their cleat should be at the top of our astroturf, our turf, and that's it. And you should drive that strike, the, 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 uh, the, the six inch punch. Um, is, is the philosophy there. We gotta work together in unison, avoiding the Tacoma Narrow Bridge. All right, this is a real simple drill. Uh, again, I stole many years ago, like every great offensive line coach, you steal things from one another. Uh, and this is just a real simple drill here. What we want is, again, we've got a bag, it can be any bag, placed in between two hips. We'd like to see gray knee bend, We'd like to see good base uh, out of our offensive linemen. In this case, we've got tight ends with us. The great thing I want to point out about this video as well is this was a true teaching phase. For us, these were all freshmen uh, and newcomers into our program uh, that were doing some of these drills for us this fall. So again, we want a good base. We want a high knee strike. We want our hips together, eyes up and we wanna keep our outside arm free in these situations. And we're doing a, a, a heel toe replace out of our offensive linemen and our tight ends here. It's not about the speed, it's about that sensation of working together and keeping that bag in between our hips. That is the most important thing. We like this again, you get a couple of bags, you get a couple of guys working uh, together, you've got two coaches, or even if you have one coach, you get one rep up and one rep back, and you kind of work in uh, a little bit of a circuit here uh, with minimal equipment. All right, <clears throat> so that's the first step in our double team progression. We'll go from the ground up in everything that we do. <clears throat> the next thing we wanna do is again work on our fit. So we got hip to hip, and now we're gonna put another person across from them and a linebacker. For us to leave at the linebacker depth, we have uh, what's considered a touch me rule. Is it perfect? No. Are we ever actually gonna get to that linebacker and do that? No. But if you can't reach out and touch that linebacker, you wanna stay on that double team. It's a first level, first concept. You need to be down on this guy and go. And wait till you drive him back into that linebacker. Again, when I set up drills, I always love setting up drills with two stations at a time. Whether you have 10 guys, whether you have 20 guys, whether you have eight guys, you go four and four, it's the same drill both ways, and you're maximizing the limited amount of time that you have with these drills. And then as a coach, you can stand in the middle, you look at the one on the left and you say, set, go. You look at the one on the right and you say, set, go. And the players should already know your rotation uh, when it comes to your drills. And so we really like these things right here. I'm just telling the linebacker which way to go. And it's really arbitrary because what we want is these guys to play the inside guy and play the outside guy uh, in our double teams. We 
again, try not to teach guys into a container. We want to teach them every single thing because we're going to have our players move around. Our guards, our tackles, our centers, they all need to learn these techniques because our guard and centers double team, our tackles and guards double team, and our tackles and tight ends double team. And so it's not about where you are in the drill. These are arbitrary positions in the drill. And you're an inside guy or an outside guy. You're not a tackle, you're not a guard, you're not a center in those situations there, okay? And so that's, again, I think, to get your student athletes to think about their technique rather than where they are um, in the drill here. As you can see, again, a nice job by these guys communicating, talk, me, 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 uh, where they're going, you, 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 when they're going in this, and then making sure that our off guy here, he needs to do a better job of restriking his hands and taking the double team over. Really nice job by both of these guys square and then resyncing his hips on contact when he gets into the defender. All right, our gap, our down block uh, as well. So that's a double team. We'll get into down blocks and then we'll talk about our different poles uh, as well. Maintaining leverage. The goal here again, this is not, and I know maybe it, this is contrary to what other people have done. When, when we talk about a down block, it is simply separating the defense. It's not to destroy people. It's not to be overly physical. We're running a gap run play to my right. I'm blocking down to my left. All that I care about is that guy not beating me across my face. We can be physical on it, but as long as I separate the defense, that is the goal of the down block. And so we teach it really, really simply here as that. That is your goal. Maintain your leverage. And so we're going to step to uh, the nearest defender with our near foot right to his crotch. Our second step is going to gain uh, gain ground upfield. My right arm, my, my inside arm is going through his chest. My outside arm is going through his tricep there. And from there, for us, it becomes a mirror game. Is the defender going to try to squeeze us down the line and we need to match pressure with pressure? Are they gonna to try to spin over the top? And in that case, we put our hands off and it becomes a mirror drill and we wanna climb upfield on that guy. Or is he gonna to try to skate around us and backdoor the play and follow the puller? And again, in which case, we're gonna switch our hands and try to leverage him uh, uh, up upfield in that. to so again, just maintain our position over them on the down block. It's for us, separate the defense, mirror the, the, the guy. That's really it. For our trap technique, this is the guard on the counter play. We're gonna have a trap pull, which means we wanna pull into the line of scrimmage. Uh, if we get a log versus a kick out, uh, we have to teach our guys to read it on the run. We want to try to kick out as much as humanly possible. So we're aiming down into the line of scrimmage. If you pull right, you strike right. If you pull left, you strike left um, with that. And so we're going to sink our hips on contact, strike, lift, and, and get them out of there. If they're wrong arm and they're down the line, again, we're going to log that guy, get our butt, and have our second puller lead around the out side. Our wrap technique, keep your shoulders to the square. So this could be a counter with a B-back or counter tray with a tackle. Good separation from the trap. You got to read the trap. Uh, and then we teach, uh, again, where our pullers, we tell them they can't be wrong and the running back reads your block. The defender's out front of you, you're going to kick him out. If he's inside, you're going to log him and the ball carrier always goes to your butt um, in those situations. Your wrapper can't be wrong. He's late. There's an athlete right there on him, and he's just got to go as fast as humanly possible, and he can't be worried about technique and making sure we're here and there. This is a great drill. Again, you don't have to have pads on, um, and you can utilize this with bags or without bags, but you get the down block, you get, you get a down block, you get a trap block, you get a pull. And again, this could be counter tray with a guard and a tackle, and then your center, or it could be somebody else there um, when we're working this. 
Again, all these guys here uh, are freshmen and young guys, and so they're just learning a lot of these things here. Nice job here. I would say we don't want them to turn so much upfield, but the defender did a terrible job in practice here, not giving them a good look. Good initial step, knee to crotch, and then uh, gaining upfield, finishing on the tricep. Our kickout block, again, the issue here is just we're not sinking and we're reaching with our hands out. Good separation here. Ball carrier, our helmet is right on the inside. This is excellent position. We should be running through uh, our imaginary A gap here um, with this one. Second look, new group of guys here. Down block, a little bit better job here. But again, we're gaining ground, keeping our feet moving. Excellent job here on a sink and strike when we kick out. And then again, a run, a breakdown, elbows in, thumbs up on a strike. Again, helmet on its inside number right there. Nice, easy drill for you to work with your players. And again, you can see everything. That's the critical part about this drill that I like and why we take the double team out of it is because as the offensive line coach here, we're fortunate we have our tight ends coach, but there's a lot of times where I'm doing this by myself. And it happens in rhythm and progression. And so you should be able to see all three things at once when you're coaching this drill. The down block happens first, the kick out happens second, the trap happens third. And so I can go from one to two to three as I'm coaching this drill and you can see all of your players at the same time, which is really, really nice. And you can see my eyes are wrapping through to both of these guys on film, which is outstanding. You want to be as efficient as possible in your drills and we do as much um, half line and live exercises against fronts as anything. The double team drill is, is one of the very few drill drills that we have to get their bodies in the right position. Again, I have one coach for 20 players, and so it really needs to be as efficient as possible. This is gonna be the one back power without the pull, okay? I know a lot of NFL guys and other people, there's duo and uno, so we call it diesel and duo. Diesel or duo is gonna be one back power without the pull, and diesel is gonna be two back power without the pull. I know online this gets a lot of uh, play as to whether it's inside zone uh, or, or power without the pull. And so we're gonna go through here and show you the difference uh, in these plays. <clears throat> we gotta run it uh, against a six man box is what we'd like to have here. We, can, we only have six blockers and we gotta block everybody. So six man is all we can handle. We've got our guy in blue here uh, with the uh, RPO in this situation here. We have that option. We do have the option to lock it as well. If we call it just straight, uh, our, our B back or our wide receiver would block the SAM. Depending on our matchups, if they're in base personnel and that's a, a really good run stopping player, We'll RPO it. If this is third down and nickel, and we feel like we can match up with this guy because he's, he's, he's a glorified corner, then we'll block him on and we can create that. Again, duo, fancy word for two, two double teams. So we have our Y and our tackle double teaming up to that inside linebacker, our guard and our center double teaming back to the will with the nose. These are base blocks or fan blocks on the backside. Your rule here is gain ground, don't get beat across your face. The ball should go right downhill through the A gap. I don't like this diagram that I made. It should go right downhill through the A gap. And you're actually reading this Mike linebacker. That's one of the critical differences besides being a downhill run. The critical difference between the zone play and the power without the pull. The zone, we would read a down lineman, and this we're reading a second down lineman. Uh, the Steelers made this famous with Le'Veon Bell, and he stayed behind the line of scrimmage as long as anybody in the league, because he was reading that guy who was afraid to commit one way or the other because he knew he was going opposite. Just like a classic running back read, if the mic goes out, the ball goes in. If the mic goes in, the ball goes out. This is great, again, many cases, based on a pre-snap read of the defense, the ball carrier should know where he's going with the football. Double team, double team, and we're rocking and rolling uh, in this situation. 
Duo versus Oki. This was one of the reasons why we installed this play a couple of years ago. We started seeing a whole lot more 3 4 defense, and we knew that for all those stunts and twists and, and all the different America's blitzes that they have, this eliminated it without having a polar. And so we get the, the up and the unders and the blitzes off the edge. And these two are simply fanning back. He wants to go to the A gap and he goes there. Our tackle, we work all of those things and we eliminate all of those stunts and games by just blocking everything back. Same read for our running back, aiming for the A gap as you normally would on power, bounce it versus a mic fit and stick it in there uh, versus a mic outside. Again, the RPO, just a little different look there on the edge. Again, we have open access on the back side. Third down and short uh, here uh, against one of our conference rivals. Uh, again, and, and it's a good play here uh, for us, able to convert. I would say the, the critique already on this is that our tight end is too deep. In a short yarded situation, he should almost be hip to hip with that offensive tackle. Even though he's in a wide deep set, he needs to be tighter to the line of scrimmage. One of the other things I really like about this play, we'll show it from the end zone here, is that on our back side, it allows our linemen to play with their splits a little bit. We are not rigid in where we have our guys line up. They're allowed to have a little bit of independence in where they want to move. And so by having them in bigger splits, it allows us to create some running lanes. And that's what this game is all about when you want to run the football is creating somewhere for your tailback to run. We got a double team here to our inside backer. We got a double team here to our backside backer. They're bossed over a little bit because we're in a three by one set to the field. Base block here, don't get beat inside. I think he is gonna get beat inside. Don't get beat inside. It's gonna be down to this roll down safety or one of these roll down safeties to stop us for more than one. I feel good uh, about us being able to do it. Good settle and strike here on number 90. We probably could have hit it into the A gap if we wanted to. Not sure where our tailback is going when 33 bounces outside. Nice job staying square. 71, our right tackle here, does a really good job. Again, our tight end should be there faster on it, as I said at the very beginning. And then 71 does a really good job staying square and staying thick, waiting to touch me before he comes off. If he wanted to, he could have been tempted to leave right now. 33 goes away, and our defensive end could pinch inside for a big play. Maybe he cuts it back because our tackle or our guard gets beat across his face. And that's a poor job by our tackle. But you see a lot of forgiveness in this play where now, again, we wash and we're running through the edge. And that's the great part about having your running back run down the A gap, keeping his shoulders square, is the ability to potentially bounce it anywhere um, on the play here. We gain three first down. Although it's not beautiful, it is an efficient run because you're gaining the first down. Even front here, first and 10. We got uh, the RPO called as well out here. And so you can see this guy's in no man land. We love it as well. We've got a lefty quarterback. And so we love it out of the pistol to go straight downhill. Uh, the uh, LSU did it famous with the same side uh, a year ago in, in their season. We like it out of the pistol so our quarterback can get his eyes right there and then make his read off of what this defender is doing, whether he's going to give the ball or uh, keep it. This is a great run. We seal the edge. We gain seven. And again, we're running through arm tackles. Gain 11 here on this one. See it from the end zone. Again, now, this is the most difficult situation when you have a three and a five. And this is why you teach your players and you go through it as hard as humanly possible to make them communicate with each other. When they're in Oki, when they're in an under front, this stuff is easy. When you got a three and a five, now we're difficult. Our tackle is in charge. Who's the most dangerous threat? Where is the angle of the linebacker? There is no hard and fast rule. The tackle is gonna determine the three techniques, a bigger threat, tight end, you're on your own. The five techniques, a big threat, we're anticipating a pinch or a pirate. Guard, you've got a base out, and I'm going to go there. And again, it depends on where this linebacker should be. With him tucked into the A-gap, I'm hoping that my tackle blocks down here in this situation. Excellent job in that. We get everything washed. 
right downhill, good patience by our tailback, and he's able to bounce it out. You see again the hesitation by these backers, and I don't even know if we get to this guy, but because there's such a mess, and because he's got to stand flat-footed, we're able to have success on this play. This is a really, really nice job. 3-4 defense. Uh, again, now we've got the linebacker stacked on the line of scrimmage. As I said, this is a six-man play. One, two, three, four, five, six. This guy's going to be the odd man out. We better have an RPO on to throw the football, and I think we do. But you can see, again, how it looks against the 3-4 defense. Fanned out on the backside. Again, you may say, hey, this is not very good by your right tackle. He didn't get beat across his face. His guy didn't make a play. We maintain leverage. There's very little chance, especially against an Oki, that that ball's bouncing outside there as it is. We're being physical. 78's too tall. This is a really good football team. This is late in the round of the playoffs. And again, you get to see it there. Diesel is going to be two back. Power without the pull here. Our B back, kick out. Don't get beat across your face. Double team, double team, fan back on the backside, shoulder square, reading the mic. Same thing, we've just added an extra blocker here. Even, again, this is an under front, so it's almost similar to the Oki fan. Double team, double team, kick out. Don't get beat across your face um, in there. Oki defense, third and short once again. We love these rather than our pullers because there's just less moving parts, okay? You get the same effect with the double teams and a kick out without the big open gaps that you see when there is a puller. It's the reason why it's so successful and so used uh, at the National Football League um, because there's less moving parts for some of these, these great athletes to run through. Well done here. Double teams on the backside. Maybe you could see some bigger splits. Not very good here. We're working against each other. You see, shoulders turn, shoulders turn. We're working against each other. Poor job on our double team. <clears throat> good angles here by our tight end and our tackle. The one thing I believe we do really well on this play is we're finishing. Yes, it's not great inside, but our tackle is running his feet. Our tight end's maintaining leverage. Our B-back didn't get beat across his face. And we've got a receiver coming in there to crack, and our running back does a wonderful job um, finishing the run here. This is going to be one where it's going to be against Blitz. Again, everybody sees this double A-gap stuff. What am I going to do against Blitz? Run your, your one-back power, your two-back power without the pull, and it should open up right through the middle. Again, I love these matchups now, right? I've got one of my best and biggest guys against two linebackers, two offensive linemen down blocking on linebackers, and we got a guy pinching or, or, or scooping here in this situation, and they're going to be a gap short right up the A-gap. We tried to get them to jump off sides. They didn't. Good discipline. And, uh, and so now we have to run the play, stay hands downhill, boom, opens up right there because we get so much movement on these guys. Our tailback falls down. Nobody even tackles them, minus the tailback on that play. Short yardage once again, same opponent, hopefully same result here. Not great by our guys. Again, this is deep into the playoffs. Even front, they switched up their front against us. Tackle makes maybe a poor decision with the linebacker down so tight. He made his call, though, and he stuck with it. He wanted to help our tight end out a little bit. Our guard is getting beat, but he's finishing the block. And again, our running back is working through arm tackles. We're fanning everything on the backside. Our, our guard is not doing a great job. He's trying to climb too soon to that, run to that linebacker, and we're losing a little bit of our leverage. All right, I'm going to skip to the next one, uh, our next play, counter. This was our number one run play for the past two seasons. We've run it out of one back, we've run it out of two back, we run counter strong, we run counter weak uh, in all of those sets. We are going to run the counter play every single week and we're going to find a way to motion to it where we have some sort of advantage, and I hope you get to see that uh, on a couple of these here. 
nothing uh, spectacular. Our rule for our offensive line is leave two, leave two, right? This is a gap run play where we want to leave two. So in this case, it's these two, but there is a little bit of leeway depending on what uh, this Sam is going to do. We can kick out the defensive end. We have a couple of calls to the open end of 3-4, where if this Sam is on the line of scrimmage or this Will is on the line of scrimmage, where we can uh, fan to him, hoping the tackle expands, and we kick out the tackle and make a tight, tight call for our, our wrap through in that situation. If we think there's some sort of pressure, we can collect the tackle and wash it down, and we can kick out the Sam and uh, wrap for the adjuster. Or in this situation, our tackle goes down, we log the, the D end, and then we kick out the Sam in that situation. It's all about what you're anticipating, and then again, making sure you have all those reps. When you're gonna see a three, four, if you wanna run into the open end side, you should have an answer for all three of those things uh, that they're going to do. Even front, again, we love it to the three technique. We're gonna double the heck out of the three. It's an easy down block for our center. We kick out, we wrap through. Those are our two, the D end in the linebacker in that. Gap seal hinge like everybody uh, on the backside. We have a tight end in here uh, who's gonna carry it over. We would run it strong uh, as well. And we've got a couple of rules uh, for that. You're going to see a couple of these go strong um, as well. We're going to get motion on this play. Uh, we start out in three by one set and we motion across and we end up in formation into the boundary, which is outstanding for us um, because now we have numbers in this situation. The tight end is going to arc release, actually go into the safety because again, we want to leave two, one, two. He can arc release for the safety. We've added an extra hat. And this goes back to what I talked to where we're going to run this play and we want to find some way where we can have a numbers advantage when we run this play. This is a great job with a log and then we actually get a kick out from our fullback in this situation. We log it, wait till you see this one from the end zone. It's, it's really, really outstanding uh, for us. Great double team, a shuffle off by our offensive tackle, does a wonderful job, settle in a strike versus the, uh, versus the pinch. But our tackle, because he settles and wants to strike at the same time, he's not off balance, and he's able to collect himself and climb to now seal the defense. Look at this, this is outstanding. We talk about sealing the defense, it doesn't get much better than this. Kick out from our fullback, and now we're running uh, well into the secondary. And, and probably should have scored uh, on that play. Same setup, same look, different opponent here. Uh, you get those two high teams, you get them into a three by one check, and then you go back the other way into formation into the boundary. I guarantee they had a formation into the boundary check. I guarantee they had a three by one check. I'm not sure they worked on their three by one check to their formation into the boundary check. And that again is the benefits uh, of some of these motions. Uh, and, and getting into multiple sets. So when we do our multiple things, a defense cannot prepare for all of them. They know we're running the counterplay, they just don't know how we're gonna run the counterplay. Awesome job, we talk about getting movement. Settle and strike, we throw this guy to the ground, our tackle is settling up to that next level, and again, we've sealed the defense. This isn't a kill shot, this is a seal and a seal kick out, you wrap through the alley, you run through the alley, right? Vince Lombardi said it 100 years ago, not 100 years ago, but a long time ago, and it still holds true to this day. One back, again, looks like we're gonna run it weak again. Kick out, this is a really great job gaining um, ground by our guys. Our tackle is able to gain ground in this situation. We've got some backups in as well. So again, you know we're gonna run this play over and over and over again. A stunt, our tackle doesn't chase based on our double team drill. He doesn't chase and now he's got a backer blitzing through. Great versus the blitz as we mentioned on our first slide. We're sealing these guys, wrong arm, wrong arm it all day. And now we're going down the sideline. We still got an extra guy coming. This is a great job by our B-back, wrapping and hugging tight to kick out. We're running on a safety who doesn't quite know where to fit. We make him miss, and we're gaining big, big yardage uh, on this play. A lot of people run the counter play, and, uh, and we think we do an excellent job. Here it is running strong. Again, with man outside, we get him almost into a three-by-one set. 
and we're going to motion back this way. So they're all rolled this way. We're going to motion this way. And so they got their SAM outside. Our tight end is going to hit and then arc release out to that guy so we can trap this defensive end. Again, we want our guard on an end. That is the goal here to get that matchup as we talked about. I don't want my tight ends blocking great run stoppers. Seal, again, not great, but he doesn't get beat across his face and they're caught up in the wash. A nice job here by these two on the double team. Galloping, staying square, climbing to the second level, cutting off the defense. We trap at both spots, we gain six or seven. This is a really nice job. Down at the goal line, again, anywhere on the football field, we want to run it. We want to run it strong. We want to run it weak. I don't even know if we get a wrapper on this one. I think we both try to double team uh, the outside guy. Tight end should go out. We collect on a stunt down here. Great job by our tackle to collect the stunt. These are our backups as well. So they all know this play, as I mentioned. This is our bread and butter. We make a mistake here. Our puller and our wrapper, there's not enough separation here. And so he gets caught up and he thinks this is most dangerous when he should be wrapping through. But again, we're able to squeeze that down into the end zone. Real quickly, I know I'm running out of time. Our one back power here. We love it again versus the Oki. If there's an ideal, uh, we're gonna run this against the Oki front and we're gonna run counter versus the even front. We're gonna push these guys out, double team back, wrap through quick and tight, gap seal hinge on the back side. Uh, following the puller is our tailback. We can smoke this again when we run it to a three by one set or, or one of those speed outs that we showed earlier. Double team, down block, wrap through. Now again, the only thing we're adding is that separation with our puller. This is a great one on third down here. Uh, again, you get all these exotic defenses on third down. And one of our favorite things, especially in an area of the field where we know we could probably go for it, is to run the ball on third down. We got great leverage, we've actually got extra hats, and we're running through some of these guys. They were not anticipating run, uh, and that's a great way to get an explosive, uh, and in this case, efficient and explosive run. We handle the stunt here. Our center doesn't know who to go to because they got guys dropping in and out uh, through here. We wrap through, their guy misses the tackle when our center pushes them by. But again, uh, we're getting some movement on there. Not a perfect play, not a very good one uh, in general. We're gonna run it to the left in this situation here. Again, great double team. This is probably the best one on the film where these two are thick through that and working back and our guard just washes that linebacker through and creates an outstanding running lane for our running back. Great job by our back. He's an outstanding football player to stay square and really read the defense. And again, we're gaining 11 and 12 yards. All right, I think I'm about out of time here in this. Again, if there's any questions, let me pull up that first one. You've got our contact on here. Again, my email is just my first and my last name, Nathan Milne at Muhlenberg.edu. And uh, we'd love to have you guys reach out to us here at Muhlenberg College, uh, one of the premier Division III programs in all of the country. Thanks so much for listening, and uh, go Mules.